It's Dave from Super Pro. We're out here today just to talk about grease and, and bushes. There's a few misconceptions out there about what it should do and what it shouldn't do. Um, all of our products come with grease in the packaging, whether it's a box or a bag, it all comes with the grease. And there's more, and more than enough grease in that packaging to do that job way more grease than you actually need. Uh, we sell the grease in tubs and in tubes. If you're gonna have greasable shackles and you wanna re-grease them, you need to get yourself a tube, do it with a grease gun. If you're a workshop and you do lots and lots of suspension, it might just be easy to get a tub. Um, this is what our head mechanic, Nick, uses. He actually puts it all on with a toothbrush. That's just his go. You can do it just as easily with your finger. Um, the important thing with the grease is it's an assembly fluid. Like when you're rebuilding a wheel cylinder or you're doing a head gasket or something like that it's an assembly fluid to make the assembly easy it helps the product locate it makes sure it's positively located and it makes the installation process easier basically what you want to do is get grease on every single metal every single surface that's going to touch metal you know and and don't be shy with it you know rub it on there liberally that's more than enough to cover that surface. Um, it's not particularly thick, but it's more than enough. And then what you wanna do is, you know, this is actually a Commodore, um, Commodore bush. You wanna make sure you get it on every single surface that's gonna touch steel. Once again, that's more than enough. I'll probably put enough grease on there to do both cars. Get it right in there, every little bit that's gonna touch steel. Make sure you get some grease on it. Um, these obviously come with a crush tube as well. So you wanna make sure that you get, get it in there and you really, you know, make sure you get it into the knurling and make sure it's greased up properly and nice and lubricated. No one likes a dry bush. That isn't good for anyone, right? So we've got both services lubricated. Uh, we've got a little bit of grease here for when the, that tube comes through. Now these also have plates on the end as well. So let's get a little bit of grease on there. We get it stuck up into the car. There's a washer on this other side. We want some grease on that as well. Make sure we got grease the whole way over. That's more than enough to keep the metal surfaces lubricated. And once again, the grease is on there as an assembly fluid, helps it positively locate, but we don't want the steel components to rust up. Um, Super Pro polyurethane is a free pivoting bearing. If the steel components rust up, when it free pivots, it will just wear the, the bush away. It will just machine it away. You can machine polyurethane and a rusty chew will machine polyurethane bush away and destroy it. Yeah, so basic greasing what you're doing every day. This is the D bush. We'll get, use Nick's toothbrush once again. You know, that's plenty of grease. That's that's plenty of grease there for the whole thing. Anything that touches a metal surface, this will obviously have the bracket go around there. So make sure you get grease the whole way on there. You wanna make sure that those steel products don't rust up. And then on the inside, on the knurling, make sure you get some grease in on that knurling. That's where, it, oops, there's plenty there now. That's where it pivots, you know. So when you've got a, a sway bar, that's obviously bracketed to the vehicle and the sway bar is constantly pivoting in there. You don't want those steel surface rusting up on the sway bar because um, that will just chew the knurling away. And before you, you know it, you'll have a squeaky bush um, because the steel's destroyed it. So that's how you, you grease up a, a sway bar uh, D bush. Basically the same process if you're gonna do a control arm bush. If you're gonna do a control arm bush, once again, we'll get Nick's toothbrush out. You get some, get some grease around there, put it around the ends, and you put it around this end here, so as you press it, it slips in and locates easier. It's a lot easier to insert a lubric into a lubricated um, hole than it is to a dry hole. So you wanna make sure you get the lubricant right in there. Once again, it's a free pivoting bearing. It's gonna have a crust tube in there. So you wanna make sure that you get the grease right in that knurling the whole way through, both sides, um, get it nice and lubricated up. Once again, that's more than enough grease. That's plenty of grease. I'm probably wasting it here to be fair. Um, get it in there, get it lubricated. That's gonna help it locate. It's gonna help it get into the arm and it's gonna stop those steel components rusting out and just chewing the bush away. So that's how you grease a bush, as I said. Everyone comes with a tube, you don't need any more. You can buy it in a tub. If you do heaps and heaps of suspension, get yourself a tub. Maybe use a toothbrush like Nick does, that saves you getting on your hands like I just did. And if you're doing greasable shackles and you wanna re-grease them, get yourself a tube um, to put in your grease gun. But that's basically how you grease a bush. Every single metal surface needs to be lubricated. Whether it's a, a D bush, whether it's a control arm bush, whether it's a, a bush for the radius on a Commodore, every metal surface needs to be done.